Well, hi again, everybody. Dan John here from danjohnuniversity.com. I've been getting the same question over and over recently, and, I, and it's a difficult question for me to answer because it's so simple, and it's basically this. Uh, Dan, uh, comma, how would you put together a beginner strength training program? And I, and I guess the problem is, is that whenever someone asks me a question, there's so many other little things that pop in. One of the first things that comes up instantly is, are you an active athlete or are you not? You're a general population person, you're what we call everybody else in our, our can you go one, two, three, four assessment. Because right there, it, 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 it changes everything. When, when I first started to lift formally, I had lifted a couple years on my own. I used uh, some of the books here in my library, uh, Miles Callum's Bodybuilding and Self-Defense as a Guide, Strength and Health Magazine. Thankfully, I read uh, Pat O'Shea early, and I saw a different vision of, uh, of things as an athlete. And so when I started my first formal training program, which was at Southwood Junior High, where we started off every day by running two laps. We did an obstacle course. We probably did oh, 15 to 20 minutes of the old-fashioned calisthenics, which were jumping jacks and cherry pickers. And if you're old enough to remember, they all had funny little names, the hula hoops and things like that. And then we'd go in the weight room and we did power clean, military press, front squat, and bench press. Great program for ninth grade football, basketball, track and field, baseball athletes. Was it perfect? No, but it was pretty good. Um, I wouldn't find really a better program until I met, met Dick Knottmeyer, who taught me the Olympic lifts, where I basically snatched and clean and jerked, and front squatted every single day of the week. And that worked f for a long time until it didn't. But, so I never had that, well, I did, uh, that's not true. I, so my learning period was basically from about 1965, and by the way, I have that booklet right there too, the Ted Williams Barbell uh, Set the Training Manual. And I saw that in 1965, and basically you would clean and press, you would deadlift, you would do deadlift variations, you would do some curls, and you'd do abdominal exercises for two sets of five, basically. And I never really touched the machine until I was in high school at South City High, and we did the universal uh, machine, and we did circuit training. And there was two different kinds. Uh, one where you mixed uh, like a, an extension with a flexion, and the other one where you mixed upper body and lower body, and both work fine for our needs. But when somebody asked me about a basic training program for, a, for what I would call on everybody else, one of my first thoughts is, you know, well, uh, okay, I'm glad to help you, but, you know, the next follow-up is, how old are you? Well, if you're under 16, I think you should, you know, certainly learn everything you can, but, um, but you know, have someone show you how to do the basics. 16 to 35 would be a nice time to learn as much as you possibly can about yourself. Do everything you can to uh, fight off uh, that uh, extra weight that seems to hit some of our 20 year olds. From 36 to 55, um, things are going to change a little bit. You want to be as strong as you can coming out of that time in your life because that's going to linger on for the rest of your life. And then once you hit 55 and above, 56 and above, uh, then you really should focus on bodybuilding and mobility work, uh, the free movement of the joints. And of course, the devil is always in the details. Uh, on all those programs, uh, there's so many questions that come up. And the first question is, great, you, you want my advice. Well, the very first question is this, always, what equipment do you have? What do you have? You know, I've got, right below me, I have three Olympic bars, I have bumper plates, 26 kettlebells, two different kinds of hip thrust machines, squat racks, uh, four suspension trainers, two TRX hip rips, um, medicine balls, every kind of Olympic uh, throwing thing, every kind of Highland game throwing thing, including the caber. We got a climbing rope, we got uh, dip rings, we got a pull up rack, we got a dip rack. Uh, every kind of farmer bar and heavy bag you could imagine. Um, so. If you're with me, uh, we have a lot of flexibility now to do things. So question number one is, what do you got? If you have no equipment at all, that's fine too. We'll do body weight based things. And then the second question really usually comes down to, what do you know how to do? But because of Brian, I've come up with some better thoughts. What equipment do you have? How many days a week do you want to train? How long do you want to train? 
And then what we have on the site, Dan John University, is that little uh, workout generator. We you plug in that information, it's kind of cool with the equipment. You just pick what equipment you have. Uh, if you have an iPhone or whatever, you press it. And if you have a computer, you just scroll up to it, which I think is amazing. You say you want to work out three to five days a week, seven days a week. It, it'll give you a full program just by pressing the one button, you know, do the workout. Once the workout opens up, you can look at certain movements like the push, the pull, and the squat and say, okay, that's too complicated. Or, I, I, that's too easy. And you can change them up and down. But really, for training the general person, I'm going to just tell you what I believe. And there's, there's no magic here. I believe you do a push, a pull, and a squat, and the numbers should basically be about the same. Uh, generally, for an adult population, uh, I think we should stick with the numbers that have been around since before I was born, from Tom DeLorme. Somewhere in that 15 to 30 range, I generally say 15 to 25, but, you know, that's five sets of five, three sets of eight, three sets of ten. Uh, you can go up as high as three sets of 12 sometimes uh, during certain periods. But the push, the pull, and the squat numbers have to be the exact same. That's just the rule I have uh, for really to keep the body uh, in a good, uh, uh, good posture, keep everything streamlined. Um, someone's going to raise their hand and well, should it be horizontal or vertical uh, pushes and pulls. And my first thought is there's the problem most people have is they do far too many pushes and pulls. Someone just sent me a workout program where they did 12 exercises. Uh, the last one was an ab wheel. 10 were upper body movements, a vertical push, a vertical pull, a horizontal push, a horizontal pull, uh, a curl, a tricep extension, and on and on. And then the one lower body exercise was the leg press. And I thought to myself, I can't imagine a worse choice than the leg press on a program like that. And then I think you should do hinges every workout. I think you should do some kind of loaded carry if you can uh, every workout. Hinges or deadlifts and things like that. Loaded carry is when you pick up a load and you walk with it. And then you should have a time for mobility and you should have a time for maybe something like foam rolling. And I just basically described the workout generator to you. Instead of me trying to reinvent the wheel, the easiest thing you can do is sign up for the free membership. It's two weeks. Try it out. See what you think. Um, and if you like what you see, including all the downloads, all the free books, all the podcasts, all the, the great forum, we have great people in that forum. Uh, that's what I think you should do. Now, if you're an athlete, that'll be a different conversation. But for now, as a beginner, do the basics, do the fundamentals, do the simplest exercises you can find. And by the way, I have no issues at all with machines. I have no issues with dumbbells kettlebells, barbells, whatever piece of equipment you have, or no equipment, we can train you. But the key, like so much in life, I guess there's <laughs> there's two keys. Huh? Number one is show up. Um, I can't emphasize show up enough. Uh, I was very proud a year ago when my brother Phil died, and the San Francisco Chronicle wrote an article about him, basically thanking him for his ability to show up. Uh, we as a family, we show up. I'm convinced that I've won national championships by showing up. I, I, the joke is, uh, the second you finish, someone says, well, it's a good thing, you know, Bob wasn't here because Bob would have beat you. And it's like, how did he not know today was the nationals? Uh, and then number two, of course, is keep going. Uh, yeah, you're going to make some mistakes when you first start off with exercise. You're going to make some mistakes when you first start off with weight training, strength training, progressive resistance exercise. And that's okay. So did I. I'm so glad we didn't have uh, YouTube and Instagram when I was a kid because I would have posted utter idiocy and nonsense because I would have been sure that I'd have been a, an expert, you know, the, the fifth time I worked out when I was pressing, uh, you know, 45 pounds over my head. But that's how we do things. Show up and keep going. My best advice for you, check out the workout generator. Um, if you have questions, the forum on the site is be a great place to start. And of course, if you have more other questions, go always go to podcast at danjohnuniversity.com and I'm always happy to help. But when people ask me, what should I do as a beginner? My number one thing I want to say is just get started. Just get started. There's an old thing about 
what's the best day to plant a fruit tree? Well, 10 years ago. Well, what's the second best day to plant a fruit tree? Today. So start today. Thanks so much. I'm Dan John, and I'm here to help.